and their sins already cast into the sea of forgetfulness, the Bible says, never to be remembered again. But they don't understand that when you get born again, you're no longer a sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hello, I'm Pastor Bob Rogers and welcome today to Word Alive. You know, we're living in a real difficult time. And when you listen to the news media, all you hear is, is defeat and sickness and America's uh, may not make it economically. It's uh, a very difficult situation. And then our government is talking about all the money and checks they're sending out. But you know, God is our source. And doubt comes through our hearing, but faith comes through our speaking. I want you to begin to speak faith and begin to bless your home and begin to declare this is going to turn out to be the best year that you've ever had. And when you do that, you'll begin to see miracles begin to happen. Today I want to share with you about grace and the goodness of God. But before I do, I have something I want you to have, something that will be a great blessing to you, and it's a print entitled The Bruising. You can see it right there on the screen, and it's a beautiful print. It was done by an artist who does Christian paintings, and this original painting sold for over $40,000. This is a print, it's a numbered print, and I wanna send it to you for a generous gift of $58. You say, why $58? Well, there are 58 categories of blessings in the Bible. The fact is, if you've ever seen a Thompson Chain Bible, it has 58 categories and all the promises of the Bible fit somewhere in those 58 uh, categories. And you're declaring that all the blessings of God are coming my way. This print is based upon uh, Genesis 3.15. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy heel but thou shall bruise its head. I want you to have it. It's titled, The Bruising. They're numbered prints. They're signed, and I'll be glad to send it to you. But right now, let's go into our services. This is the Word of God, and I believe it's true. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. This is a roadmap for my future. It shows me how to get to heaven. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be in the name of Jesus. As you remain standing, I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And I want to begin reading in verse 8. This perhaps is one of the greatest scriptures in the Bible. It shows the plan of salvation. And it's a scripture that every person needs to memorize. You need to be able to quote this scripture. But in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Father, anoint your word today with great power. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. Today I want to share about uh, a really a prophetic word that God gave me, and that is this month, the month of May, is a month of God's special grace that He's going to pour out upon each of us if we'll receive it. The Bible says it is by grace, by God's gift, by God's goodness, by God's kindness that we're saved. And we have to accept it, we have to embrace it through our, through our faith. It's not us being good. We can't get good enough. Uh, being good doesn't get you to heaven. Jesus is the one that gets you to heaven. And so through Jesus, 
in his goodness, he's given us the promises of salvation. And by faith, we embrace those, and this is how we're born again. The Bible teaches that uh, the numbers are very significant. Uh, when you talk about the number five, and May is the fifth month. May is number five. And five is the number of grace. I woke up the other morning, I looked on the clock, and it was 5.55 a.m. I said, something good's going to happen to me today. This is a day of grace. And so when you see a five, and that five becomes alive to you, it's a sign of God's grace and God's mercy. When I give you the definition of grace, there's theological terms that you can learn at the seminary, and they explain it, and you have to have a dictionary to figure out what they're really saying. But it simply means it's God's goodness, his kindness, his compassion, his favor that he gives to you simply because he loves you. It's an expression of his eternal love for every person here. And so when you go through the Bible, there are uh, 361 references about grace in the Bible, and most of those are in the New Testament. So grace became so prevalent because none of us can earn anything from God because we are human beings, but God in his love, he gave us Jesus. And when we accept that by faith, God will bankrupt heaven if necessary to show his goodness and kindness to us. And so when you look at the number five, it's amazing. God took five loaves and he fed 5,000 men, almost 30,000 people counting women and children. He did it with five loaves and two fishes. You, there, there are five chapters in the Bible or five books in the Bible that have only one chapter. I know those are your favorite books to read. And it is, it's a sign that God's favor comes quickly. It's not something that takes a long time. It's something that God will meet you, and he'll meet you quickly, and he'll meet you on time. The Ten Commandments are basically two sets of fives. The five, first five commandments are, show your relationship with God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before you. Thou shalt honor the Sabbath day, and on and on. The last five commandments have to do with our relationship to our fellow man. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not kill. And so it is in sections of five. When you see the number 25, somebody gives you a change, and it's a quarter. Say, well, praise God. It's a sign. Five times five is grace times grace is added to me. And so this is going to be a month, if you'll embrace this, that God will show himself powerful to you. It was David who took five stones and he killed the giant. I prophesy today that there's going to be giants that come down this month because of the goodness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise clap. Hallelujah. And sometimes we don't understand and we don't see God's goodness when it knocks on the door. So today, I want to share with you an acrostic of the word grace because this will help us to understand when Mr. and Mrs. Grace is sent by God to your house, you'll know that it's a gift from the Lord. The first thing about grace, the G stands for goodness. What does the G stand for? goodness. And it's very amazing how many people have no clue that the word goodness comes from the root word God. God is not someone who is, uh, is austere and difficult to work with, but God is a loving God. Who would send their own son to die for people who did not even accept him, but God did? I remember when I was going to seminary, I was staying in a little apartment. I had a, a table that was really a, a piece of, of a curtain that was over a, a bunch of magazines. And I'd put a little curtain over it and I had a lamp on it. And uh, I was going to read the scripture. And that day, I opened to 3 John 2. 
It says, Beloved, I would above all things that thou would prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. When I read that, it was like a light came on on the inside of me, and God spoke to me. It's the greatest thing I know today. It's the greatest thing that I've ever learned. And it's simply that God is a good God, and the devil is a bad devil. God wants us to prosper, and he wants us to have good health, even as he wants us to be strong spiritually for him. And when I saw that, I began to understand that God was for me. God was not against any man because of their color, because of their education, because their state in life. God was not against any person. He's for us. The, God's only against four things. He's against sin because when a person is involved in sin, what cancer does to the body, sin does to the soul and will send you, you to hell. He was against sickness because our bodies are the temples of God and the Lord wants us to be strong and healthy. And then he was against poverty because poverty destroys your dreams. It destroys your hopes. It put changes on you where you cannot succeed in life. And then he was against demon oppression and possession because you take on the personality of those demons that are binding your life but God is for you. Raise your right hand. Say, God's for me. God's for my family. And God's extending his grace. The Bible says the thief, that's the devil, comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. When, when Jesus spoke those words, it was like a man who drew a line in the dust. And he separated what was from God and what was from the devil? Those things that add to your life, that bless your life, that bring healing to your life, it comes from God. Those things that destroy you, that uh, when you lose your job, when sickness comes, that's from the enemy, from the devil. And many people get that confused. When trouble comes, they blame God. When God didn't have anything to do with it, it's the work of the enemy. And so if you can get that in your spirit and you can understand that goodness is from God and badness is from the devil, it changes everything. It changes the way you believe. It changes the way you pray. It changes the way your faith works. So the G stands for goodness. The R stands for righteousness. Say righteousness. You know, uh, the Bible says that he that knew no sin became sin for me, that, uh, that through his sin, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We're not going to be. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. You know, we were all sinners. And then when we got born again, we became new creations. And many people, they, they don't understand that, and they always have a sin consciousness. And so they get down to pray and all they can do is repent of sins and they've repented of them a hundred times. And their sins already cast into the sea of forgetfulness, the Bible says. Never to be remembered again, but they don't understand that when you get born again, you're no longer a sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We have a drug and alcohol recovery center. And uh, it is one of the most successful in this city. We have a 78 to 82% cure rate compared to the secular cure rate of 6 to 8%. But the reason is, is because I believe that those kids become new creations in Christ. Um, I, there are many organizations that help people to stop drinking, and I am for every one of them. And the fact is, we have the AA that comes and meets and at uh, the Lord's Kitchen and, and so forth. But the AA says, and they start their meeting, I'm a drunk. I'll always be a drunk. I'm a drunk till the day I die. And they come there and they get up and talk. And, you know, uh, there's people that are helped by that, and I'm very thankful. But, you know, I don't believe that. They may have been a drunk. But when Jesus comes in, he takes the old drunk out and he puts a saint of God inside of you. 
and you become born again. Hallelujah. That's what it means. We're born again. We're not the old. We're the new. Hallelujah. So when you think about that for a moment, you think the R stands for righteousness, which means now you can come boldly before th the throne of grace and obtain mercy in the time of needs. That means because of grace and the righteousness, you can get your prayers answered. It means you're going to heaven on the first load. There's not the first class and second class and third class. We're all going up on the first load on the first class group. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. And then the A. Say A. a. Say, I'm going to love this A. It stands for angels. You know, just because you may have never seen an angel doesn't mean that angels aren't real and angels haven't visited you. The Bible says he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways and they will bear thee up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone, which means angels are there to protect you, to, to lead you and to be with you. When Margaret and I were evangelists and we were traveling, we had a meeting up in South Bend, Indiana, where Notre Dame was. And we were driving there, and we went through Kokomo, Indiana, and we came into a blizzard. The fact is, they eventually shut off the highway. Trucks were jackknifed everywhere, and we were trying to get through that, and I slid off the road. I could not get out of uh, being stuck, and we were stranded there. And it was uh, probably about midnight, and we were praying, Lord, what are we going to do? We're out here. It's cold. And about that time, in another, on the opposite side, and there was a, a divider, it was a four-lane road with a, a median, a car came, and we hadn't seen a car in an hour. It stopped, and a man got out, and he came over with a shovel. He said, stay in the car. And he dug us out, and I was able to get out. Margaret looked back, and the man disappeared. The car disappeared. I believe God sent an angel, and God helped us. Oh, hallelujah. Grace is for goodness. R is for righteousness. A is for angels that God is sending this month. How do you spell grace? G-R-A-C. The C is for companionship. I think one of the worst things in the world is to be by yourself. And the Bible says, though, that the, the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us, but he'll be with us until the ends of the age. And so the Holy Spirit is going to meet with us this week. I, I felt like the Lord spoke to me, and in the month of May, I have been getting up every day in the middle of the night to pray. And I'll pray until I, I, some, one night I woke up. I was there on my knees. I'll pray until I sense the presence of God, and then I'll go back to bed because I want God's direction and God's guidance. People who study these things tell us in your lifetime, you will only have eight to nine friends other than your family. And then it talks about what causes people to be your friend. Do you know what the number one thing is? Honesty. If someone won't look you in the eyes and say, Bob, that ain't right. You can't do that stuff. You, you've got to do this. They're, they're not much of a friend. What causes people to be friend is kindness, is gentleness, and being with each other, spending time with each other. You can't have a friend if you don't spend time with them. And if you will spend time with the Holy Spirit, if you'll spend time in prayer, God will show his tenderness, his kindness, his generosity, his wisdom, he'll give it to you. He'll speak to you. He'll give you direction. Praise God. And then the E stands for elevation. God's going to elevate us this month. I believe that when you come out of the month of May, you're going to be better off than you were in April. Elevation. Everybody say elevation three times. Elevation, elevation. Not elevator, but elevation. I believe God's going to raise us up higher for the glory of God. Grace, God's goodness. 
R for righteousness. A for angels. C is for companionship. And E is elevation. We're going to be elevated. There's a great story in the Bible about Jeremiah the prophet. He lived in a time when there was such sin in Israel and he prophesied the judgment of God was going to come and Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar would come down and, and, and there would be the punishment of God against Israel. Well, the king in those days was Jehoiakim, like Kim in North Korea. Both of those Kims were bad people. And so Jehoiakim was the father of meanness, and he called, he called Jeremiah in. Jeremiah had written down his prophecy on this scroll, and he said, I want you to read that uh, prophecy to me. And he had uh, other leaders in Israel, and he read that prophecy. And then the king laughed at him. He said, I don't believe that. And he took a knife, and he began to cut the scroll in little pieces, and he threw it in the fire. Well, God's judgment did come. Jehoiakim died, and his son became the king. And his name was Jehoiachin, like my chinny chin chin. And so Jehoiachin, when he became the king, Jeremiah stood, and he prophesied against him in chapter 22 of Jeremiah. He said, nothing good's going to happen in your life. You'll not have children. You'll not prosper. And your seed will never sit on the throne of rulership in Israel. He placed a curse upon him. After three months, Nebuchadnezzar came. He took Jehoiachin and he put him in prison in Babylon. And there, while he was in Babylon, he was chained. He was a prisoner. Well, when you read in the book of Matthew, Matthew, the first chapter, it talks about the genealogies of Jesus. And it comes down and it lists Jehoiachin. Now, wait a minute. This guy had a curse placed on him by the prophet. He'll never have children. His uh, family will no longer be leaders and sit on the throne and he'll never prosper. How did he get to be in the genealogy of Jesus? You know what happened? He repented. He asked God to forgive him. The fact is, tradition says his mother went to Babylon, went into the prison and talked to him, said, you need to make things right with God. You need to ask God's forgiveness. And he repented and fasted before the Lord. And when he did, things turned around for him. The fact is, the king of Babylon says that he found favor with the, with the king. And he took him out of prison. He gave greater favor to him than all the other kings that he had there in Babylon. He gave him money. He gave him a house to live in. Secondly, you read in Chronicles that he had seven children. That's not bad for being under a curse and not being able to have any. He went from zero to seven. And, and then his grandson was Zerubbabel. Say Zerubbabel three times. Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel went back to Israel and he became the governor of Israel. He wasn't the king, but that was the highest position he could have, the governor. And he became a descendant. He became in the, the genealogies of Christ. And in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6, raise your right hand. Say, I love this verse. Say, it's my favorite verse in all the Bible. It says in Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And who art thou, O great mountain? Thou shalt not stand before Zerubbabel. Thou shalt become a plain, crying, grace, grace. The grace of God will cause your enemies to be defeated. The grace of God will call every obstacle in your life to come down. That mountain will become like a plain because of God's grace. And how does it all start? It starts by asking God's forgiveness.
for repentance. There are times that we all have to repent. If, uh, if you sin, the Bible says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And if we will confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to, everyone to place your hand over your heart. And I want us all to pray this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus, you have a plan for my life. And devil, you're not included in that plan. Now take your hands off my life. Take your hands off my family, off my body. Take your hands off my money. In Jesus' name, everything you've told me, devil, God shall do the opposite. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me today from all unrighteousness, from all impurities. Take it out of me. May my mind be clean. May my conversation be clean. May everything I do be pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. May I show kindness to those around me, especially to my family. Now in the name of Jesus, I'm healed by the power of God. Come on, say it with me. I'll not have cancer, nor diabetes, nor heart disease, nor any generational weakness. Pain, get out of my life. In Jesus' name. Now raise your right hand high. Say, Father God, thank you for blessing me, for prospering me, for elevating me. Thank you for your angels that have surrounded me. Lord, I shall not be poor. I shall not be broke. I shall not have a lack of any good thing because I've chosen to follow you. Open the right doors. Close the wrong doors. Guide my steps in Jesus' name. Now reach over and touch a person next to you. Say with me, next to loving you, Lord, I love your people. I love those on either side of me. I bless you on the, my right. I bless you on my left, in front and in back. May something good happen to you before the sun goes down. Father, surround my brothers and sisters with your protection for the glory of God. Now let's pray. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. Again, I want to send you this beautiful print. It's entitled, The Bruising. It's a print that will bless you every time you look at it. You realize that we've got victory over the devil through the cross. It, uh, how you can receive it is right there on the screens. And uh, I hope I can hear from you. But I want to pray for you before we go. Father, I loose your blessings in the name of Jesus. I bind every demon, every devil. We take authority over every fear every doubt, unbelief, we cast it down. And we declare that by faith, we're overcomers. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thanks for viewing today. In the name of Jesus Christ, may there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.